All right, we got our hacking machine running and ready to use. Before we get to explaining all of the stuff you see on the screen, first, we need to make sure our machine is working properly. So we'll just go through a few checks. The first check that we want to do is, is your machine in full screen mode? Now, in the previous tutorial, I showed you what you can do to get it in full screen mode, and all you need to do is minimize this screen and maximize it once again, in case it already wasn't in full screen mode. And that is because newest versions of Kali Linux automatically set your machine to be in full screen mode without installing any additional tools for that. Usually, this trick should work. And if it didn't work and your machine is still not in full screen mode, then we need to install something called VirtualBox Guest Editions. And I would advise all of you to do it even if you already have a full screen mode machine. Because Guest Editions will not only help us with uh, getting our machine to be full screen, but they will also make our machine run smoother and better. In previous versions of Kali Linux, we always had to install VirtualBox Guest Editions to get the full screen mode, so let us see how we can do that in the newest version as well. First we need to do is we need to go up here and click on Devices, then navigate down to the Insert Guest Edition CD image and click on that. They should get imported and in just a few seconds we should see a disk icon on our desktop. If we double click it, it will open a folder where we will see a bunch of files and other directories. Don't worry, we don't need to know what each of these files are or what do they do. The only thing we need to remember is the path to where these files are. And up here we can see that these files are located at slash media slash cdrom0. So let us copy this. If we right click, copy. Now comes the fun part. We have to open something called terminal. And terminal is something that we will use for the entire course. It is the most important tool you need to master as a hacker. But for now, just follow what they do and we will explain things as we go. To open a terminal, right click on your desktop and click on open terminal here. It will open this window where we can execute our commands. And once again, since terminal is an important tool that you must master and learn from scratch, we will cover it in the next section in greater details. For now on, we just want to install VirtualBox guest editions. The first thing that we want to do is we want to navigate to that path that we copied. And to do that using terminal, we must use a command called cd. This cd command stands for changing directories, and you can see that we are currently on the desktop directory, which says right here. To change the directory, we type the cd command, and then we paste the path where we want to go. So, change directory, slash media, slash cd-rom. Press enter, and you will see that in the next line, we will be changing directories to the desired folder. Now, to list all the files inside of this directory, we need to type another command, which is called ls. What this command stands for is simply just listing the contents of the current directory. So you can just remember ls to be a short command for list. If I press here enter, we will see a bunch of the files that are located in the current directory. These files are actually the files that we saw once we opened these VirtualBox guest editions. You can see these are the same files. Right now we are just there inside of our terminal. And out of all of these files, now we must run one of them. Can you guess which one? We know that we can't run the exe files since those are aimed for Windows systems and we are on a Linux system. But we can, however, run this one called VirtualBox Linux Editions.run. If you guessed that one, congrats, this is the one that we will run. To run it, we can use a command that says sh virtualbox linux editions dot run. And this sh is just a way for us to actually run this file 
which we are also going to explain once we get to explaining terminal in greater details. For now on, if we press enter, hmm, this program must be ran with administrator privileges, aborting. For now, don't think about this and just run the following command. sudo sh virtualbox linux additions dot run. If we press enter here, you should get a prompt like this asking you for your password. Then type in your password. And keep in mind that even while you're typing, you will not be able to see anything appear right here, which doesn't mean that you're not typing, you are typing, just it doesn't show anything inside of the terminal. Once you typed in the password, click enter. And it will ask us, do we want to continue with the installation? We want to specify right here, yes. And it will start the process of installing VirtualBox guest editions. Now, you will notice that this entire process will be performed automatically. We do not need to do anything anymore. This will install on its own. And don't worry if there is a part of this entire process that you did not understand. We will discuss all of these commands and tools later on. This installation right here will take a minute or two, so let us just wait for that to finish. Okay, so it has finished and we can see right here that it tells us running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. What this simply means is that this installation will not have any effect until we reboot or restart our machine. So there are two ways that we can do that. You can either go in right corner right here, click on this and click on restart. Or you can do it in the cool way using terminal. So if I cancel here and go back to my terminal and type the command reboot, it will say command not found. And if you get this message as well, what we want to do, we want to type sudo and then once again, reboot, press enter, and this will restart our machine for us with just one command that we ran in terminal. Now we're ready to perform the second check. And the second check would be internet connection. So we want to see whether we can access the internet. And to check that, we're going to use our terminal once again. And we will try to ping Google. So let us open up our terminal. We already know how to do that. Right click and then open terminal here. And if we receive responses back from Google, that means we can access the internet. So let's check it out. Type ping google.com. And here it is, we're getting responses back. Great, we can access the internet. To stop this, we must press Ctrl C. As we can see right here, 21 packets transmitted, 21 received, and 0% packet loss. But even though we can access the internet, I want to point one thing out. If we go to settings of our virtual machine, and we select the virtual machine, navigate to settings, and from the settings, navigate to network settings, we will notice that we're attached to NAT. And what NAT is, is a network address translation. This means that the IP address that our Cal Linux machine has will be given to us by a virtual box. So if I go to my Cal Linux and in the terminal type sudo ifconfig, press enter, enter my password, here we will see that we got the IP address of 10.0.2.15. And this is the IP address given to us by VirtualBox. Since this can present us a problem later on, we want our IP address to be received from our DHCP or from our router. And before I show you how to do that, I want to point out why this could present us a problem. Well, this IP address right here does not belong to the IP range of my local area network. If I go to my Windows machine and open up command prompt to check out the IP address on my physical machine, I can type right here ipconfig and I will see right here that the IP address that my physical machine has starts with 192.168.1 and this is not the same IP range, it starts with 10.0.2. So I want to change this to start 
as my physical machine with 192.168.1. To do that, my Kali Linux must receive the IP address from my router. And for all of you Mac users, you can also type in ifconfig in your terminal on your Mac. Basically, you can check the IP address of your Mac the same way that we did inside of our Kali Linux by typing ifconfig. And all we need to do to change this IP address is go to the network settings and switch from NAT to bridged adapter. This will automatically set my bridged adapter and my adapter to be this one, since this is the only one I have. And since I'm connecting over cable connection, I want to go to the advanced and check right here, cable connected. You can select your adapter right here. And once you do, click on OK. Just one more thing before we click on OK. In case your wireless adapter is not working in Kali Linux, since there are some wireless adapters that are not supported by Kali Linux yet, keep in mind that the cable connection will always work. So if your wireless adapter doesn't work, just switch the adapter to cable connection and then press on OK. Now that we changed this, if I go back to my Kali Linux machine and run the same command, which is sudo ifconfig, now it starts with 192.168.1. And keep in mind that for you it might start differently. It doesn't have to start with these three numbers. It might be something like 192.168.0, or it might be something like 10.1.1 or 10.0.1. It depends on your network. So now we can see that both of these IP addresses are starting the same. Okay, great. Now that we went through both of the checks for the full screen and network connection, in the next few lectures, we can proceed to get more familiar with the Kali Linux environment and hackers terminology. See you there.